Hey Sunshines, we are at Madhouse Gyms, Georgia. It's time to go in for our workout. We're gonna do our lift, abs, cardio, and then finish off with some stretching. So, let's get to it. So as you can see, we have a whole bunch of stuff in here. All the cardio equipment you can have. This is all chest stuff, legs and booty is over there. On the other side is back. This is shoulder, so it's a lot of equipment. So basically, walk into the bathroom is half your cardio. So welcome to my YouTube channel. Here's my friend. <laughs> this is the owner of this fabulous yeah, gym. How you doing? <laughs> and he's the greatest. He looks like a Santa Claus. <laughs> he is the person who's been able to help me keep Getting my physique even better. He always shows up, Sid, what do you need? What do you need? And we get the equipment I, here. I do say that, but she does it. I get the tools. Yes. She does the, the tools. The tools are key, though. <laughs> <laughs> the tools are key. So, All right. this is my buddy. He's known me since I was three years old. So, this is his gym. Oh, that's a cute camera. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Okay, ready. Me and my puffer okay. coat. <laughs> One, two, three. All right, y'all. It is back day. Trying to work on bringing y'all some more content. That's not based on a tripod and me kind of like placing it here and there. But we're going to start out our new little YouTube channel with back day. So back day, number one thing, warm up of course. I do my warm up, get my hips warm, get all that going. Then I get my hooks. Now they don't really make these old school ones. I got them from Amazon. They don't really make these like this anymore. They usually have plates now. So I don't know if these even exist anymore. I got these probably like eight years ago. But the plate ones still work well, it just depends. I don't use them because they slide. And for me, I have to make sure, like, everybody should actually make sure, like, everything is lined up. So if they're sliding and one arm's going in, that means one piece of your back's going to look different than the other piece of your back. So always pay attention to details. All right, let's get to work. start with good enough weight kind of get everything warm get the blood flowing pretty good the key thing for me though is a lot of people see I don't lift a lot of weight load there's a difference between weight load and lifting heavy people often get them confused so if you notice I haven't stopped moving so the key thing for me is when I post on workouts y'all gotta realize majority of the time I superset everything. So what that means is, I don't do less than 30 reps at a time, ever. Okay, so prep, that changes. But in terms of improvement season, when my food is up high, cardio is low, and my goal is not to grow. Sorry, I'm looking for weights. Uh, my goal is not to grow. I have to be very, very strategic with how I lift and keeping it more of a cardio-based lift. Um, cardio power in a sense though, because the weight still goes up, so you're still doing a progressive overload, but the main focus is just really activation. 
and making sure your endurance more than um, power is kind of working. That's what happens when you do higher rep things. You become stronger. Like, yeah, I could lift the weight, but I don't need to. And in that same breath, I use the hooks too because when people are talking about heavy this, heavy that, you got to recognize what category you're in. If your category has parameters, you need to be lifting according to those parameters and according to what your genetics allow and what you need to grow. So if you still need to grow, you can lift a little bit differently. For me, my sole goal is maintenance and maintaining the standard of the category. So you'll see me check my watch a lot because I'm keeping my rest time. Usually I have my other watch on. I wear two watches at a time, so this one keeps my wipe my rest. This one kind of tells me how long the workout's been going, what the calorie is, even though that's not always accurate for the watches, but kind of gives you a guideline. So, you know, week to week, like, all right, this is how much I burn this week. Even if it's not accurate, it's accurate in terms of the numbers that it has week to week because you've been wearing the same watch. So I just like to get a little bit of a objective information as a train. So when you're doing your row movements, for those who don't really row as much, you want to make sure you're really focusing on your form. And in general, you want to focus on your form because form is really, really important um, more than the weight that you're lifting. Because if you're getting that good squeeze and that good activation, nothing beats that. Now, if you get the good activation with more weight, that's ideal. So for me, I won't stunt the weight that I do. I'll do as much as I can for the rep count that I've allotted myself. So whatever that weight is, that could be different every day, I lift based on that. So I'm like, all right, I know I can lift a little bit more. I'll go ahead and do that. So my rep shoe change, I'm gonna go up and wait. Like I'll do the most steps in the beginning, of course, get everything flowing. But when I get towards the last um, one or two sets, I'll go, I'll push the weight as much as I can for that amount, as long as it's controlled and I know it's not doing too much. But back days I can kind of get away with because your back can never really like be too big in a sense, as long as it can, my body tends to grow together. But it'd be different if it's a leg day. Like leg days, like I can't push it like I could my back because my legs, they, they blow up like this because running track of my genetics, it don't go together and I end up in wellness. <laughs> Key to note, if you notice, my pace didn't change no matter if it was the first set or the last set, first rep or the last rep. You wanna watch for that. Cause when it starts getting more intense, more burny or heavier, a lot of people start speeding up, 
start twisting and doing a lot of momentum type base movements. So you want to make sure your last rep looks like your first, as long as that's good form. <laughs> um, and your last set looks like your first. So during my workouts, I always keep my amino chem and glutamine mix in here. I drink that during my workout. I do my amino jet from Evergen before I get in here with a liquid carnitine. I keep that in pretty much year round. Um, just because carnitine is good for you, just health wise. Um, so I always make sure I keep that in, no matter if it's getting ready for a show or not. But I'll do the liquid one because it only has um, acetyl L carnitine, I think it's that one. Versus in my prep, I'll use the ones, the powder version, which has four types of carnitine in it, which I'm really trying to like burn fat. But right now I'm just maintaining. The amino chem is good for hydration and um, just general recovery. So as I'm working out, I tend to get hungry while I work out. I'm hungry all the time. It doesn't matter what season it is. Um, but it kind of gives me those aminos to make me feel like I'm, make my body feel like, not my mind, make my body feel like I was getting some nutrients as I lift. To get me through the workouts, I eat again. The key thing for me is I don't really start a full warm up again. I should already be warm for the, work, the movements that I've already done. So I get ready to go in and get straight to work. I still keep my rate, rep range pretty much the same the whole time. So before we started with um, unilateral reps, I always do unilateral movements because that's the key thing for my balance and that's what's been able to get my spine as straight as it is. Growing up I had a um, 45 degree curve. Um, well 45 is what you, where you have to get surgery at, what they say. Um, I was at 41, so I was four degrees away from having to get surgery for my spine, for my scoliosis. Um, so we started lifting, and that made the world of a difference and was allowed me to keep my spine straight just from using weights instead of surgery. So now we're going into bilateral movements. So these are going to be your more advanced movements. I'll go through um, in the future on my YouTube. I'll go through a few different movements that'll help my beginners kind of just figure out what the hell they're doing in the gym. So good thing is this is one of the main pieces that is almost in every LA Fitness. So most gyms have this piece. So you can either go top handle, mid handle, grip, under, and they're all going to work different pieces of the back. So play around with those grips so you're able to kind of just figure out what's going on. Key thing is your form does not change. Get your feet set, abs tight, chest up, and move from there. I'm going to take the curve handle today. So when you see like some of my workouts, primarily on back, I don't do as much as legs, is you'll see me kind of move my feet sometimes. And what I've found is once you kind of get really connected with your body, I can move like my pinky and activate a piece of my lat. I can move a piece of my pinky toe, my big toe, or drive my foot differently into the ground while I'm losing back if I feel like the activation isn't fully where I want it to be and I just find it with my foot and then I'll stick there and keep that. So if ever you feel like one lat is like, all right, I don't feel like firing today. One, you may need body work. 
boy just may be weaker. But if you know you've been taking care of all those things, it's probably just a foot placement. And then you want to find that. So your feet don't always need to be the same when you're doing movements because you want to go with, if you're walking back, I just want to make sure my back is feeling the same and moving the same. So that's a little bit of detail work and something I've found as I focus on more things to just kind of make myself as best as I could be. I'm very anti-weight claiming, so I hate people just let the weight go and mess with the machine. So I'm very, very cautious when I get in the machine, out of the machine. One more set to go. So you know you're run out of range of um, range or ability to create range of motion if the weight clinks. If you hit it and your arm is still kind of bent, when it could be straighter, that means you probably need to bring the seat back. But it also is going to depend on the length of your arm, length of your legs, how you feel in your rib cage just with this digging into it. Just pay attention to all those things, but how you set up the machine is going to be very crucial to how you activate it for your body. I don't think you need to be in here for more than an hour. It depends on what you're doing and how you train. Since I do superset a lot of things, sorry, I gotta check my car. <laughs> Since I do superset a lot of things, a lot of things get done faster. But even on the times I don't superset, nah, superset helps get you out. <laughs> so generally an hour for the lift. But when it comes to detail work in terms of like your rollout and all that stuff, that's where the time comes in. So I'll be in here for like an hour and 40. When I get done with this, I still got my 20 minutes to hit and then abs and then stretch. So there's still like layers to it. You got to warm it up, do the work and then cool it down. And those details are what most people don't do and how you get injured and how you kind of decrease your longevity in the sport. So details matter. Everything matters. All right, last set, then cardio time. Time. We are doing cardio. So I keep cardioing year round. I'm very much a HIIT person. Um, it just works better for me. Probably because I've been doing HIIT my entire life. So my coach was like, all right, like, all right, when he got with me, he was like, we're going to feed you like an athlete and you need to train like an athlete. So most people get done with their sport transition to bodybuilding and lose all the athleticism. My whole thing is do the same I've been doing my entire life. So we come in, do my hit. If I only need 20 minutes and I'm done. So I'll work you through that workout. I will not be talking in between because it's hit. And if you're doing real hit, yeah, <laughs> you don't have it. So when I start, get ready for hit. I switch it over to the juvenile station. It becomes a big party in my brain and my ears.
So I do a mix between all the rectus. I want to get the upper and the lower as well. So that could be any type of thing, just kind of leg lifts, flutter kicks, anything. I love this machine here because it kind of helps ever stabilize everything. And you get your leg lifts too. And depending on kind of how you push your head, you're able to get a little bit of upper ab too at the same time. All right, y'all, that wraps up our workout for today. If there's something specific you wanna see, certain exercises you wanna see, anything like that, comment that below. Send it to all your friends so you can help guide them down their journeys too. If you have people who are new to the industry or just wanna get in shape in general, you can kinda of send them to my channel. I'll help guide them as well. Like, share, subscribe, comment below what you wanna see. If you need to find me somewhere else, I'm on Instagram at vitamin C, B-Y-T-A-M-I-N underscore C, and the same handle on TikTok. If you need merch, Silence Merch, that's also over there on the handles under Instagram. And if you need discounts on your Evagen supplements, that is code CYD, 10% off. Thanks guys, thanks for hanging in with us. Welcome to my channel and we're gonna keep pushing the content. Love y'all.